Hello, Morla, and welcome to Speaking of Everything. I have a very interesting guest in the program. Many times she came in to the show when she was a member of parliament. And when she was leaving parliament, she was here. And now she's back. The one and only, I'm sorry, what's it up uh, Miss Ludmilla Dunker, former member of parliament. How are you doing? I'm fine, Oral. Thank you so much for having me. It's always great to be here. It was good, you know, when you, when, when you were a member of parliament, whenever we call on you, you made yourself always available. Yes. And that's good. So good to see you back. The last time you were leaving parliament, you also came on the show. Remember? Yes. Yeah. Um, I came when I just got into parliament. I came when I went independent. And now I am back and uh, better. But thank you for having me. Yeah. You're welcome. So you, you're on the list. And tell us about the party you're on and how things are going. So I did not run in the January elections. Uh, I decided to take uh, a step back to reflect. But I decided, and, and it's a little story. Yeah. So 24 hours um, before I pressed buy on KLM.com, because my family and I had decided to move to the Netherlands. Oh. I actually was um, working on moving to the Netherlands two weeks from now, in, in at the end of July. Mm -hmm. I wanted to pursue a PhD. Um, my daughter was going to go to school. My partner as well was looking forward to some new work. And 24 hours before pressing purchase on mm -hmm. klm.com, mm -hmm. government fell. And my close friend came over the day after, and it was the three of us in my living room, my partner as well, and we started to talk about the state of affairs. You know, we just had elections in January. I actually was looking forward to the new coalition going in and, and seeing how they could turn things around and work for the people. So I was looking forward to the new coalition working, and when government fell, um, and we had these discussions about the state of the country, um, everything had to be put on hold. I couldn't leave. I couldn't leave. You know that I love St. Martin. I know you love St. Martin as well. And I felt that um, this was a time to not only come back to the arena, but also join a party that I believe I share the same values with um, that could do a lot of good for the country. And so I joined the Party for Progress, PFP. I'm the number 11 candidate on the party. And uh, it's a party for me that holds government accountable, that has a vision for St. Martin, sustainable development, education, and is also willing to be honest and transparent with the people. And that's why I'm back. And that's why I chose the Party for Progress. What did your father say? Because your father is an attorney. He was in the former Nelson Tilly's parliament, a senator. He was also a uh, minister of justice. Did he tell you, don't run or run? <laughs> <laughs> My father is very supportive mm -hmm. and he is always like whatever you want to do the family is there to support you you know i think he understands as well i mean he was someone who as well had a number of different roles both in the antillian government and you know first minister mm -hmm. of justice um so he understood why i also wanted to step back you know the reality of politics right. is is something that you have to be strong to be in but when i decided to come back he said hey why not let's let's give it a go and my whole family my mother everyone supports me yeah that's good. How do you feel about the events or what happened just uh, last night with that horrible uh, shooting and killing? So I actually was asleep. The family was asleep at the time. Um, and we woke up this morning to the messages and the phone calls that a mother, a partner, a wife lost her life. And I felt horrified. I couldn't imagine the, the pain all of the families must experience. Um, there have been some other victims as well. And you know, honestly, like it's not only sad, but it's a little upsetting that this is what St. Martin has come to. Um, but I believe it's because we have sort of forgotten who we are. And, um, and we need to now turn things around. And that's why I think this election is so crit critical and so crucial. Um, but it's very, very sad. And I'm sending strength and comfort to all of the family members affected. 
Yeah, because we've never had this kind of violence before in our history, never. No, and um, and even though, you know, politics, especially campaign time, can get a little ugly and nasty, we've never experienced this, and this is not who we are. And I am really hoping that it changes us. I always say that, yes, we should be more proactive than reactive, but this is a situation now in which we need to stop everything that we're doing and reflect and change the way we've been doing things. In case you've just joined us, uh, you're watching or you're listening to Speak About Our Thing on Hot 99.9 .9 FM Radio, Facebook, and YouTube. My guest is uh, Mrs. Uh, Ludmilla uh, Duncan. You know, I can mix up with the two so, members. Uh, so she's so number she's 11, number uh, 11 on the PFP list, and we're here to speak with her. You know, You've been in Parliament before. You serve a full term in, yep. in Parliament. Uh, you expected to go back again in this election. W what are the things that you find important being a member of Parliament? So my experience has taught me a lot, not only about politics, but more importantly mm -hmm. about the structures and the processes that need to change. So Parliament itself, it's been 14 years since 10, 10, 10. Right. And so we have to do an evaluation of the structure itself. Um, there is the rules of order that need to be adapted, and there are draft rules on the table that need to change the way we, we have meetings, change the way we work as MPs. Also, too, many people have a right to expect more from Parliament legislative-wise, but we need a legal department. Government has a legal department, and that's why they have, let's say, the, more respon the, the bigger responsibility to present legislation. But Parliament needs a legal department so those two departments can work together. We've seen legislation passed, but not implemented in government. That's an issue. Mm. So there is a gap there that needs to change. And so I believe that the structures need to change. Um, being a part of a new party that can work to work towards making this country better will also be something that I'm looking forward to because then any motions, any ideas that I have can then be implemented. And your party, PFP, is a young party. I don't think there's anyone in that party that's over 50. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> no, but I would like to say that I am someone especially uh -huh. that respects my elders and I believe that you all who have sort of paved the way for us, we should be asking you for advice, we should be looking uh, to you for insights and so forth. So we should be working together because innovation and experience to me is the best approach to move St. Martin forward. Uh, Sometimes it's good. But sometimes the old experience is bad to you. Know what I mean? Well, <laughs> so so then definitely we have to be. Um, we really have to be. Uh, we have to look at how we take in the information, yeah. that experience, uh, definitely, because yeah. I, I agree, not all experience is good experience, but I think that mix is what we need, yeah. the new and the old, yes. So now, so now that you're back, how is the campaign trail going so far? You know, it has been very, very positive. Mm -hmm. I have a, a team, you know, my partner, my family that supports me, and uh, although everyone is rightfully annoyed and upset and angry um, there is still an openness to have a discussion about why there still needs to be um, an election why we still have to go to the polls uh, so although it's a tough political landscape and it's a it's going to be a hard campaign mm -hmm. i still have hope i still uh, feel good um, and i will continue to speak to as many people as possible and tell them we cannot give up on this country so you think people are upset that we have to go back to the polls so quick? Yes, always. But you know, what's interesting, Oral, is that in the past, when we've heard that everyone was upset, we haven't seen the numbers go that much lower. Turnout still kind of is, 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 is at the same. So I hope that people still come out. Um, that over the next few weeks they realize that we're in such a difficult position, but at the end of the day, we need elected officials to run the country, and I hope that they come out and vote, especially for uh, PFP and for myself, yeah. The thing is, we are at a very low point mm -hmm. now in the history of St. Martin. We have the situation with uh, GEBE. Mm -hmm. Everyone is complaining, mm -hmm. the, the outages, etc. We have the, the, the political rhetoric and the political violence. A lot of people are worried about Simrat and where we go from here. How do you feel as a politician? 
So this is one of the most difficult times to not only be a politician, to be, but also to be a citizen, to be a resident of St. Martin. I think over the last few years, we have seen a little bit of an exodus. We don't really talk about it. People are leaving. Yeah. People are leaving. Uh, there are people abroad that don't want to come back, and that's completely understandable. For me, or what is something that I have always been proud of as a people, in our lowest times, which is usually around hurricane time, we become the best version of ourselves. We help each other out, we look for each other, um, we care, we speak to our neighbors, and I think that is what is going to, what, what this country is going to need now. We're going to have to pull something out of us to be different. We're gonna to have to put our differences aside. It's going to be extremely difficult, but if we can do it when our homes are destroyed, when there's no electricity, when schools are down, then we can do it now as well. But the leaders are going to have to be the example because they're looking at us, yeah. You notice any difference between now and when the first time when you ran? Yeah, uh, definitely. You know, there is so much more social media discussions. Mm -hmm. There's debates. Some of them are very ugly and personal. Uh, we see now for the first time violence, you know, amongst political candidates. We've never seen that before. Um, it's a lot more dramatic. It's a lot more rough. Um, but the stakes are higher too. We have, I don't know if we have more, scan, more candidates than we've ever seen before. A lot of parties. Um, so it's, it's hard times. It's hard times. But, but I think we have it in us to bring ourselves out of this because no one is going to save us but, but us. Yeah. What are people saying to you, uh, young women, men? What are they saying to you on the campaign trail of what they're concerned most about? So besides not wanting to vote at mm. all because they're tired, uh, we have an issue with education and schools. Yeah. You know, That's still there's there. been a yes because That's there's. Been forever, for the last what, 40 plus years. Because we haven't done anything drastic or to transform the system. Mm -hmm. We're not speaking to our teachers and understanding what their problems are and really solving them. There's a disconnect between government and the schools, what is happening on the ground. We're not listening to our youth, and they have become more vocal than we ever were so that I was, especially right. as a child, and they are saying, listen, we want more activities. You know, um, a lot of people have to work two jobs. The economy is really, really bad. So policies that could allow us to, you know, maybe lower house rents or even ask businesses to give parents more time off. These are things that are not impossible. The government just have to say that we're going to put the people first as opposed to businesses, as opposed to, you know, other interests, we have to put the people first. So people are complaining about prices. We know that prices are going up. It's all around the world. But what we need right now is a government who knows what they're doing and that is brave enough to make changes. I think you, you touch on something important. Putting people first mm -hmm. is important because if you put people first, then everything else will fall into place. And it's scary because when we look at what keeps our island mm -hmm afloat or what is supposed to run society, our nurses, what is the state of our hospital? Are, are our nurses getting the trainings that they need, the support that they need? Our police officers, security, we're seeing an increase in violence. The, our police officers, our justice workers are not happy. We need to, to deal with those problems right, right now before things get worse. You know, our teachers, we have teachers leaving. Um, and then when they come into the country, because we have to, you know, uh, get teachers from abroad, they, we've heard some issues issues with the unions, um, teachers are not getting the permits fast enough. So our human issues we have to deal with and then we can see society improve. But um, yeah. yeah. Well, in case you just joined us, there's a speaking of other thing on YouTube, Facebook, and on Hot 99.9 .9 FM Radio. My guest is no stranger. She's a former member of parliament. She's the number 11 candidate on the PFP party, Ms. Lou Miller Duncan. and. You said so, um, Solange? Was yeah, it? Solange is my first name. Ludmila is actually my middle name. So it's Solange Ludmila Duncan, oh, okay. named after my mom. <laughs> okay, good. Yes. So when we come back, we'll continue right here on Hot 99.9 .9 FM, Radio, Facebook, and YouTube. Please tell us. We are vibrant, expressive, warm, and diverse. Together, 
We conquer and now we expand into new horizons, giving you more of the best. Introducing our new Bankomatico Plus with wider acceptance, purchase protection, and enhanced security. Whether you're online, traveling, or in paradise, experience more with Windward Island Bank. Bankomatico Plus, more of the best. Oral, Oral Gibbs Live is uh, number 11 candidate on the PFP party. And her name is Ludmilla Duncan. So launch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's good to have you here. You know, it's, um, you know, when you look at politics today, there are more younger people like yourself. There's a whole new guard, actually. Yep. If you look at, say, uh, the PFP, a number of the candidates there, parents were former members of mm -hmm. parliament, ministers, and so forth. How did they receive you in the PFP? It seemed that you came from another political party. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, the party received me with open arms. Um, it's interesting because Melissa and I, um, we've had a good relationship in Parliament. So I was already working very well with them in Parliament already. And so once I went independent, you know, she called and we've been having discussions about joining the party. We align on a, a number of different uh, policy issues and, and, and we have the same values. So it was very easy and it's been very welcoming. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I've been appreciate, appreciative of um, these last couple of months with yeah. the party, yeah. yeah. So this is it's a good welcome then? That's yes, definitely. Definitely a good welcome. Yeah. Um, it was funny because in 2020, uh, what I call legacy kids, right? A number yeah. of legacy kids popped up and we were all in Parliament and I said, ooh, this is <laughs> an interesting time. It's very interesting um, because, you know, um, we're now the second generation, um, you know, to be here. And we have a responsibility too, and I take it very seriously because we, and I said it on the floor, we can no longer complain about what didn't happen because now we're the ones mm -hmm. that have to make the change. So uh, it's been interesting, and, and but good, yeah. So what do you want people to know about you, uh, Ludmilla Dunk? That's a good question. <laughs> because a lot of people I, I find don't know me still. Um, so I am someone who, loves my community. Mm. Uh, I've done a lot of different work. I've been a part of uh, the first women's soccer association, yeah. the soccer club on the island, yes, yeah, some years back. Did a lot of uh, youth uh, wow. sports programs. I'm on the board of a, a youth baseball team. Very proud of that. So I love sports. Uh, actually, after Hurricane Irma, because we're in hurricane season now, it was interesting to see the young people in the neighborhood kind of going a little crazy yeah. because there, there were no devices and the internet was down. I actually asked my mother and her friends who are all teachers yeah. if we could kind of create a community school space because we didn't know how quickly schools were going to, to, to start back. And they were like, sure. And I walked around a few roads. By the end of the day, I think I had maybe about 20 neighborhood kids that would come to my house and kind of get lessons and play and so forth. So I love my community. Um, I also have a foundation, the Emma Foundation, and we've had a glasses program that has run over the last What's three the years, foundation? the Emma Foundation, okay. named after my daughter uh, who passed away. Uh, we've given free glasses to children 16 and under over the last three years. I'm very proud of the work we do. We have a great board. So I'm a community person. I've always done work, and I've been a policy advisor in government for well, since 10, 10, 10. Oh, yeah. So policy and the way in which government is supposed to work is, is my thing. And um, so having an experience that I had in parliament this time, I am going back ready to not only hit the ground running, but to demand that we be more decisive and that we take more action. I like we that have point. to. Decisive. We have to. We have we to. We've been very indecisive on this island. You know, I use the analogy that it's kind of like a house that was a beautiful house, but we really maintain it. And the cracks in the walls, and we're looking at the cracks, we're like, okay, we have to call somebody to fix that. Uh, and we haven't, no, and that's why now, yeah. everything that we haven't done, we have to do. It's serious, serious, and I'm ready to get to work again. It's quite interesting because everybody I meet 
complaining about the power outages and the load shedding. And I said, well, I don't want to be complaining. Yeah. We all is in this. Yes. It's becoming like normal in a way. But it's unfortunate mm -hmm. because we can't grow as a, as a country. And you all as politicians and leaders are going to have quite a challenge just dealing with that. You know, um, I take responsibility for myself, especially in a position that I was in. Mm -hmm. I also reminded people as chair of the petitions committee, mm -hmm. the power is in your hands. Hold us accountable. Send a letter to parliament stating, listen, this is our problem. We have a right or we have a, uh, had a right. I'm not an MP anymore. But I used to remind people, you have a right to petition parliament and to petition government, demand that they listen to you, send us messages, call, pull us up on the road, because we're all in this together, and um, it's only 15 members of parliament, and they cannot know everything, and our people need to remember that the power is in their hands. That's why they have to vote, and that's why they have to listen, go on Facebook and make your voice heard, because we can't continue like this anymore. And I don't have anything written down, and I don't know what, is there anything particular that you want the audience to know about that is important to you? I want us to remember who we are as a people. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to be called a friendly island. We're still friendly in some instances, but I think we've forgotten, and that is to do with a lack of vision and policy, proper policy, um, a lack of education and building up this nation. I, I want us to remember that who we are at our core are a good people. We care for each other, and now is the time to go to the polls and elect people who are going to speak the truth and are going to hold each other accountable. Because it's a lack of accountability that is, is, is why we're here now. Because if people would, if you did something wrong, you should be held accountable for it. And I think people have gotten away with too much in this country. And um, on August 19th, you're going to be tired, but get up anyway, go to the polls. I am someone who have shown my love for St. Martin and I'm now going to be even, I'm going to have even more energy to do the work because of the crisis that we're in. And I'm asking everyone to join me, join the Party for Progress. And the thing is, too, is poverty is on the rise. We have more poor people in the history of this island. It's really bad. So in my studies, there are a number of different ways in which to tackle poverty, again, at policy level. Mm -hmm. You know, we can create um, whether it's a food stamp program, but that's, that's something. But we have to look at the core uh, and the root of poverty. Why are our people poor? What about the economy, the food prices, bringing those prices down? Who do we import food from? So every ministry, the Ministry of Health and Social Affairs, what are you guys going to do? At the same time, the Ministry of Tourism, economic prices, what are you going to do? The Ministry of Education, are our students finishing with the skills that will allow them to get jobs. I know of, 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 of students who went to vocational school that are doing extremely well right now, but the quality of education has gone down. So are our students getting the skills that they need to get, new, get jobs, or are, are they being locked out of the economy? So each and every ministry has to tackle the same issue of poverty in a different way, and it's going to take effective and decisive action, but also proper policy making. We need to understand what we're dealing with, and that's where research and data comes in as well. And that has been a big issue. Everyone you speak with tell you that the data isn't there for St. Martin. You know, we have this capacity problem. We've talked about it for years. Right before I left Parliament, I proposed this digital research, research library. It sounded a little, okay, academic, but, and I know, Earl, you have, your children are highly educated. We have researchers in Holland, in the United States, in the UK, that can do research for us, give it to government, give it to Parliament, hey guys, so your decisions could be based on science. We have researchers that are not on the island that are abroad. That all we have to do is ask them for the help. And so um, that, that idea was proposed. It wasn't implemented as yet. The new, the new parliament sat, but that is something that I'm going to push because we cannot just be talking without the data. Yeah. It is so important because you can't make change if you don't have it. Exactly. Sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. And um, it's, it's 
problems sometimes we think that they're simple but they're actually very complex and that's why you need the research to understand exactly what is happening and then to make the best decisions moving forward another thing that i'm hearing from a lot of people i had um someone here who said the ombudsman in fact that it was six thousand people waiting list for low-income homes yeah then i had the president of the collectivity of St. Martin, and he said they have 3,000 people on friends St. Martin waiting for low housing homes. That brings it up to 9,000 people on this small little island. We have a serious problem. We are in a state of crisis in every sector, and the housing crisis for one, we've talked about for years mm -hmm. and you know there was discussions about okay what can we do with rent again it's policy making um, we have families and because you just mentioned the numbers you can't imagine how they're living so if they don't have a home where are they living how are they living and it's something that we have to tackle now and it's going to take not only building new homes but looking at other ways in which to make it easier for people to rent houses and again it's just creativity whether it's tax incentives to landlords um you know who are saying listen i would like to lower my rent but you're not helping me either it's a give and a take You're and government has to, to do that to, to, to say that yeah You're the first but uh, i think it's a great idea because if rent is high people spend so much money to bail apartments and so forth you don't expect them to just lower the rent exactly they want some people we i want to give a family my home but i can't because i can't afford it because my um my 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 Call. loan yeah. the loan at, at at the bank is too high so what we have or what we need to do is incentives but also oral there are a lot of european funds that we don't access mm. there's a lot of funding available for housing for education for infrastructure we have a roads crisis too oh yeah and that we're not tackling because we're focused on, I don't even know what some of us are focused on, but if we would just take a step back, we could use different avenues and, and create different policies to tackle these crises. It's not impossible. Well, uh, Ms. Duncan, we only have about a minute. It's all yours in closing. Anything you want to say to your people? Well, first, thank you so much, Earl. It's always a, a pleasure being here. Um, I would like to thank everyone for their support. Thank you for tuning in, but also I'm asking you on August 19th to still get up and go to the polls. Our country is one of the worst states we've ever found it in, and it's going to take a coalition, a party, of competent and visionary professionals who know what they're doing. My name is Solange Mila Duncan. I'm candidate number 11 on the Party for Progress PFP. I've been a policy advisor. I've been a member of parliament. I'm a community person. And this time, it's about working harder and acting and moving fast for this country. And I hope that you can put your support in me. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Wish you much success. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. And that's it for now on Speaking of Everything on YouTube, Facebook, and on Hot 99.9 .9 FM Radio. See you next time. Take care. Bye.